Hi, welcome to the demonstration today of um, a festive still life hosted by the IEA. First of all, I want to just go through a few basics uh, with you. I just need to set the way. Right, first of all, I'll show you my palette. Um, you will have a list of the materials and the colours I've used on the email, but just to show you how I set the palette out. I start with my yellows and pinks over here and then go through my blues. Um, this is the colour that I particularly like at the moment, it's King's Blue Light, it's a lovely colour. A colour I don't use an awful lot is blue-black, but I've, I've added it to my palette because that mixed with yellow makes the most delicious greens. I don't know yet if I'll use it because I've got this golden green here, which again is um, wonderful mixed with ultramarine and you can lighten it with any of the yellows. So those are my colours that I use. I mostly use uh, rosemary and colour brushes. They um, accompany the very reasonable in price because you buy them online, so there's no middleman. So these are the brushes. They're mostly flats that I use. So these are long flats and the range I use are Eclipse brushes. So they're that, all nice. Now, why am I festive still life? Um, every year I do paint my own Christmas card and I haven't done it yet. So this might turn out to be this year's Christmas card. We'll see how it turns out. But I'll show you the, this is, I like the square format. This is one I did a few years ago, not particularly Christmassy, but it's one that you can use throughout the year. So I've left it blank inside, but you can personalize them. And on the back, I've done a little picture of it and you can put things like your website and contact details if you want to sell them commercially. They come with the cards. I use, if you're interested, I, I do use Vistaprint, which um, there are several out there, but I find their delivery is, is very good. So it's really good to fill the area. Even if you look at this one, when I did this um, as a still life, with it going, out of the picture. I didn't actually crop this to make the card. I just deliberately filled the whole area because otherwise if it was just in the middle we'd have had all of this around the edge. That makes sense doesn't it? I say that and then I forget to do it. Then yeah anyway. Um, right so with a dilute mix of um, oh, raw number. Okay, so I'm just looking to see where I want to be with that, and keeping keeping the drawing fairly loose. You don't want a tight drawing in the uh, beginning because if, you, if you're too tight with it, you end up just sort of colouring it in, don't you? Right, so we're going out of the picture with these leaves. I like these leaves just ducking out of the picture and they are slightly in the shadow, which is, from my point of view, is quite good because it means that you've got variations of the of the tones. I've done quite a few of these um, little things, filmed them myself, but I've always filmed them on a time lapse. So I can actually get a two hour video down to about three minutes and it looks like I'm painting like fury and I'm not. But the thing was, because I was filming it and I knew it was on time lapse, I felt as if I'd got to work quickly. It was really weird. Uh, okay. Get the handle in. I've, I don't know why I've done this to myself. I've got two of the, one of the, two of the hardest things to paint. I've got a silver jug and I've got a glass bottle. Why do I do it? I don't know. The thing within an ellipse, you, they can go very wrong if you've got an ellipse like that this one obviously of the base has got to match it wouldn't be a straight line because we've got this so you've got to imagine you can see it's transparent so that ellipse will match that ellipse and if you're not sure you can always put a line straight through it so we're looking at a curve something like that and with the bottom of the cup so there we go that's that's got the shape of that sorted out I might not put all the leaves in. I was really excited a few weeks ago because my, my holly tree was just completely covered in berries. I said to my husband, I said, oh, look at that. I went out last week, they're all gone. 
So this morning on my dog walk, I was, um, I knocked on a neighbor's door, <laughs> socially distancing, of course. And um, I asked if I could, I'd been envying her variegated holly for a while. So I said, oh, could, could I just, yes, she said, she was excited. She said, yeah, any, anything else you want, drop some of this. Oh, that's fine, thank you. <laughs> Okay. You, one of the things you've got to look at when you're doing something like this is the relationship of one um, thing to another, because it's quite easy to concentrate on that and then concentrate on that and realise that the space in between is too great. So in a way, you kind of got to look uh, quite hard at the the negative space so I can I'm not looking at that leaf I'm just seeing a shape that comes down like that and I'm not seeing that leaf I'm just kind of seeing that that shape there I just realized I'm doing this in a dark color so I should have to be very careful when I paint the Christmas rose that I don't pick that color up and make my white or whatever color I'm using dirty so that's in shadow and this one's at a different height and it's nicely in shadow as well I like that I like a bit of shadow I can't tell you how strange this is standing in my studio in complete silence knowing there's 40 odd people out there watching me I might forget you're there give me a nudge if I shut up too much or tell me to shut up if I talk too much. Right, so again, I don't know if I've gone quite big enough. This lovely little bud, I was hoping it wouldn't open up too much before I started painting. So we've got that up there. Yeah, I think that's quite nice. So we've got to think about these in relation now to the bars. It's quite useful to hold your brush to see that top of that little vase comes just below the level of that cup. You've got to think about, I'm looking at the space in between as well while I'm doing this, and this shape between the bottom of this flower and the top of that. So again, it's the similar sort of ellipse to that with the straight sides and, oops, It's a funny shape, this thing. I've drawn, painted it many times. I've never actually got it quite right, I don't think. Never mind. Might even be just a little bit wider. I was experimenting this morning. I had everything in that box. I had nuts, I had tangerines, <laughs> everything. And in the end, I thought, no, you've got to think about um, when you're doing something like it's getting a harmony of of colours and the the orange just kind of jumped out as a it didn't work let's put it that way but I, I saw the cherries I've been buying fruit so I thought I'll, I'll try those normally when I set up a still life I prefer what one calls a, a found still life just to come in and see something and just paint it as it is I think sometimes if you if you set up um set up a still life yourself it can look a bit contrived uh and we've got one more just down here and we've got a little thing full of berries over in the back let's pop oh they don't quite reach as far as that i've perhaps got a slightly different perspective to you Right, anyway, let's see how this goes. Now I'm doing what I tell people not to do. I'm still sticking with my small brush. I'm gonna go slightly larger now. I mentioned in the materials desk that I was using um, flats. This is a, this is a number, this is a number five and it's uh, an eclipse brush. And so you can see how soft it is. It's, but it's got a nice spring to it, which is quite nice. I find if you're using some of the hog brushes are nice, but in the early days, they can be a bit, a bit scratchy. 
no, the background cuts through, it's about there. Okay, um, I didn't do all the leaves. I'm going to put a few more leaves. There's some nice uh, leaves with the hellebores. It actually comes down a little bit further there. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Again, I've got to be careful I don't pick up that dark. The stem going down into the water. This is top of the right. So I. I'm just using uh, translucent colours at the moment. Just trying to think where I'm going with it. Just a thin wash on that. Uh, I'm trying to just pick out my darks at the moment. I've got a bit of a problem that my light is shining on the board and all I'm seeing is a reflection. quite useful to get a few darks in early. There's a leaf there that I didn't put in. Let's get that in. But the paint is still very thin. I, I save all my uh, dark, um, sorry, talking and painting doesn't always work. Um, my light colours till later and the, that then all goes on a little bit thicker. Uh, the background, it, it is black, but it's not black, black. Uh, I think so. I think for this, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use the burnt umber. Go for a bigger brush as well. This is a number, number eight. So I'm going to go now, it's a much bigger brush. I'm using a little bit of the zested medium to thin this down. So I've got raw umber and I've mixed in some ultramarine. I'm just going to take a little bit of might be too much alizarin crimson. Let's just see what that's like. And you know, it's very dark back there. Because this is thin, it should dry fairly quickly and I'll be able to lighten if I need to. But you can just find the shape of the flowers. It's quite useful as well to be able to um, cut in at a later date. So if I've made that flower too big, I can cut in to make it make it smaller. Again, I have to be careful when it comes to painting the flowers that I don't pick this up. Never mix enough paint. Right, let's just come in. It's got a bit going on through that gap. And I'm actually picking up the line. I said I didn't want to muddy the white. So I'm using that line as an outside line for this. Does that go dark or light? Let me see, it's slightly lighter there. I'll have to either darken that or lighten that because it's, you've got to look at what, how it's registering. I mean, it's, this is really quite dark back here. So I've got a little bit more ultramarine in this because we've got shadows coming from the, I don't want to make too much of the shadows, they could be too defined, but it's quite strong um, shadows. Sometimes I'll leave the background as, as thin as it is here. It doesn't always need anything else over it. So I've just added a bit more ultramarine and um, alizarin to that now. Edge of this cup registers quite light against that, and here, so I want to get that really nice and dark to emphasize that color there. Right, I'm 
think it would be nice if those berries broke up into there. I think I might take artist license and do that. Again, that's a bit more ultramarine and um, alizarin make a really nice dark, almost a black. Now these leaves are very light over here, so I'm just going in nice and dark there. So I can, I've got the option to lighten this should I need to. I, I probably haven't got all the leaves in actually. That doesn't matter. It's very dark behind there. Let's get that in nice and dark. probably have to lift a bit out there because I've covered over the, the handle which registers quite light to the background. You can probably see this better than me. All I can see is a shine at the moment. I'm just going to try turning this off for a second, if that helps. Mm, no, because I can't say anything. I can't see anything. All right, let's put that back on again. Sorry about that. No, the paint's gone a bit too thin there. I'm doing what I tell people not to spreading it out rather than mixing more. Yeah, nice dark background. Lovely. Gorgeous. A bit more dark in there. Yeah, lovely. Really dark there, so it wants to be a bit lighter there. I'm just going to thin that down. It's a bit thinner there. Okay. There will be more cutting in to do because I've but I'm worried about where my berries are going to be over here. I can cut in around that leaf, can't I? And just a little bit of dark against that. Let's get that standing out. Okay, now I've got to remember that I lost my drawing a bit here. Right, that's so that's green. That's right, much in the shadow over there and here. Just a bit of green coming through there. It's good to have bits of colour coming through. This stem was quite dark green to start with, and then it picks up the light. Dark in there as well. So this green is all I've used here is diluted green gold, which has probably got a touch of alizarin with it to darken it. But again, all at the moment at this stage, just translucent paints. That's lovely and dark, isn't it? That's gorgeous. Just building up the darks where I want them. Some bits are darker than others. Some of it also will blend into the backgrounds. Doesn't all need to, to stand out. So, I lost myself, I guess, a little bit there.
I usually end up with a handful of brushes and end up using the same one all the time. darks in behind there. I'm working, by the way, I didn't mention it, I'm working on a, a toned board. What I usually do when I've finished a painting session, if I've got, if I know I'm not going to be painting the next day for any reason or a couple of days, because the paint, especially if it's in a cool place, I'll often just pop my um, palette in the garage overnight and the paint will stay nice and fresh and wet for the next day. Um, but um, if I know I'm not going to be doing that, I'll scrape all the paint up, up off the board and then I'll just use it to paint prepared boards. And this is just MDF that I've given it a couple of coats of gesso. And with the scrapings off my palette, I've painted it and it just gives a nice toned surface to work on. And, and, and actually also it gives it quite a nice, nice surface. So you've not just got the gesso there, you've, you've actually got the, um, the paint. And, and sometimes if you choose it, you know, if this was a bright orange, for example, and I didn't cover the whole lot, little bits of orange will come through and it actually helps to key the whole picture together. So it um, gives the painting a harmony. Orange probably isn't the best example, but um, I have used orange is particularly if you're doing something like um that, that's got a lot of blue in it that that little bit of contrast is rather nice now when you're painting glass and silver you actually really just have to paint what you see don't start thinking what color is glass just look at the object in front of you and thinking what color is that and i'm looking at it now thinking what colour is that? But it's also it's not just the colour; it's the it's the light and dark. So that it, there's some very dark bits in this. Putting the berries in, but I'm using although they're bright red, I'm using a mixture of ultramarine and alizarin, and then I can add the brighter highlights later because a lot of these berries are in a shadow. But the reason I'm putting them in now is so I don't um, lose them. I can paint in around them, which is gonna be a bit fiddly diddly, but never mind. Uh, there's quite a lot right inside the cup, which will stay dark. Actually, I put a little bit of cadmium red in with that mix. And let's put some down here as well. Yeah, I know I said I wanted to put some up into here, didn't I? And it just breaks a bunch of uh, berries there. I probably won't make as much of it as is there, but let's get them in. Let's see. Let's make it look right. We're doing a picture after all. We're not slaves to what's in front of us. Same with landscape. If it doesn't work, don't put it in. That's what I say. These do come right forward to here. I might keep them further back, otherwise they might take over a little bit. There we go. So they, I've got those in and I think, you know the saying, less is more. Well, I think this is an instance where you've got to actually think less is more. Otherwise it could look a bit dotty and when you're doing something like berries don't make them too small look at look at them in relation to the leaves that are around them it would be very tempting to just go dot 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 but they're actually quite big um, in relation to the what's around them so anyway now I just well I've got the small brush I know I shouldn't be fiddling too much I'm using ultramarine and um burnt umber and I'm, I'm just going to get the the dark because it's really dark in here and I think if I went to a bigger brush I would muck it up. All right so I'm trying to do the inside of the thing not 
trying not to lose my ellipse. Okay, now we've got this nice dark on my brush. I'm going to do that edge because there's some reflection, reflecting darks there. There's some not darks under there. I'm dodging about all over the place with this, but I'm going now to my slightly bigger brush and let's get the Body of the cherries done it while I've got the uh, <coughs> excuse me while I've got the alizarin on the go now alizarin and just a tiny touch of ultra these cherries are gorgeous again temptation to get them a bit small I'm going if anything you want to go bigger than they actually are so if I look at that one I'm just going to measure it one one cherry is actually half the width of that. So I, I thought I was going bigger than it was, but in actual fact, I haven't. So do watch out for that. I've drawn that one too small. Go a bit bigger. Touch of alizarin and ultra. Make, makes a nice black actually. As I say, I, I don't use black as black. I use it when I'm mixing and in, in actual fact, I didn't use it. I might use it later, I don't know. I used to work, I have to say, I used to work with a very limited palette. I think it's because I was particularly a plein air painter, well, I still am, um, and you can't carry all your paints with you all the time. So I got it down to a basic six. Uh, to go out. I used to squeeze some that I didn't use a lot out onto my palette so that would last me but the colours that I used a lot I um, that I knew I'd have to carry around with me. I kept it sort of quite a, a limited palette which was uh, it's better to carry around but then I allowed myself the freedom as I've got the box. I'm a bit of a squirrel when I see a bargain I have to buy it. So this colour that I've used all over here I'm going to use it as some of my darks in here. That's a bit green, so I'm going to put some of that in there. It, it's probably a bit too dark, that, but it is, if you look at it. I don't know how well you can see it on your monitors, but it is very dark. Oh, and this one. This is... Um, it's a Griffin Alkid, so it dries very quickly and it's quite runny. So when I'm doing something quickly, I, I use this to, right there. Um, so that on its own is, I think you'll see, it's too oh, purple. So then that was my gorgeous King's Blue Light um, with a bit of alizarin. Now to stop that being quite as purple we can choose one of these now I can never decide which I prefer let's go for the lemon and it looks quite green there but hopefully that's a lovely look at that isn't that gorgeous so I do get excited about colors I hope you do I'm sure you do That's nice, I like that. Okay. So that wants to be darker in there because that is reflecting light. It's also reflecting those cherries. So let's have some. We've got quite long shadows on this because of where I've got my lamp might not make them quite as long as they are because they look a bit odd
picks up a little bit of the cherry colour, it doesn't really matter. It's gone a bit purple again, hasn't it? You know, it wants to be light against this bit. But I'm going to have to see if I can darken it. Let's add a little bit of ultra in there and a touch more of the yellow. See, it looks like it's a green on there. But I want that much darker just there so that I can get this, this bit of silver mug light. Now, while we've got this colour, it's, it's quite difficult to see what we've got inside this. Um, I'll have to put this down. But, so, it's, yeah, it's quite difficult to see what we've got inside the colour. But it wants to relate to the other colours in the, in the picture. So I'm squinting at it, looking out for the darks. It was very dark there, but I still need a little bit of that very dark. Dark in there. Got some reflections on this as well. There's a lot going on inside here. Lots of tiny little marks. I do try and avoid using the small brush too soon. Because otherwise, as soon as you pick the little brush up, you know what happens, don't you? You'll fiddle. Yes, you do. Right, so we've, we've got the line there. Uh, do you know what? It doesn't matter if I lose the line that I've got there because we know it, it's there. You, your brain kind of carries on that line. There's a very strong dark just inside there. Just it, It's just kind of observation, really, and looking to see where those strong darks are. This, this um, oh, that's a bit blue. This stem that's coming down here tends, it, it's gone really dark. Um, right, I've lost the other one. There should be three in there. Let's put that one in there. So we've got to carry that colour through. So we, yeah, it goes both sides. We've still got some of the, <clears throat> the background cloth is reflected in, into that as well. And there's a lovely light reflection at the back. I don't know if I, it's probably a bit too soon to get that in. I'll leave that for a minute. I just might forget it though. Now we need a, a, a grey. Start looking at the silver now. I've used the, I'm using this warm white. It's, it's, it's again, it's a, it's a lovely colour. Um, so let me think, let me think. Burnt Umber, let's try. Burnt Umber and the King's Blue can actually make them beautiful greys. Oh, that's quite nice. Let's just try that, see how we go with that for the oops, silver. It's all very well painting silver, but again, what colour is it? It, it? it just really relates to the colours that are around it. Um, I've just put a little bit more zest it in with my paint there, just because it was dragging on the, dragging on the board. The thing is, you, you mustn't put too much in there because it does go, it does go very slippery. And then you can't put anything on top of it either. So it's quite blue, but I'm hoping it will register as a as a grey when um, we come to look at the final picture. Um, Mo, we've, hello. We've just had a question through about ah. the light that you're using, and I would also ask you about the size brush you've got at the Mo, and what you 
have you tried the cobalt hues? What do you think of them? Because cobalt's quite expensive, aren't they? Yes, it, it is. Um, the, the thing is with the hues, uh, well, first of all, I'll answer this while I think about it. This is a size five long flat, okay? Um, now the hues are basically uh, a synthetic version and you'll find that there's a lot of filler in it. Now, it sounds, um, let me just grab this one. This is a cobalt blue, which is a series E. So that would probably have been about, I don't know, 30 old pounds. Phew, a lot of money. But because it's pure pigment, you need so little to tint your colors. Whereas if you've got a big tube of a hue, you would use a lot more of that colour because it's got a lot of filler in it to make the colour that you want. So it sometimes it's false economy because that, to be honest, has lasted me ages. Um, not because I don't use it because it's expensive, but it has lasted me a long time. Um, yeah. Again, I, I treated myself to this um, Amethyst color. Oh, it's a series three, that's not so expensive. But again, particularly when you go for a good brand, I mean, I use, I use Michael, Michael Harding and as Jane says, other brands are available, but I use them because the pigmentation in it is so strong. Um, I'll tell you what I do, well, I can, I'll just show you how strong it is. So, okay, so, Ooh, just for example, let's use this warm white, which is Michael Harding. Now I am going to get, hopefully, you can't see that and I can barely see it. There's a pinprick of yellow on there. And, and it was literally as if I'd stuck the end of a pin in, how much I needed to tint that white. It is so strong. In fact, what happens quite often, if I want a little bit, see there's hardly anything there, I think, oh, that's far too much. The thing to do is, don't try and add more white to it. Start again with your white, and instead of dipping back into that, dip into that. That way you won't pick up too much paint. You see what I mean? Does that help? Yeah. So yeah, sometimes it's false economy to, to, to buy the hues. What I suggest you do, especially if you're just starting out with painting, there's nothing wrong with the student paints and buying the hues and things. But when you've finished a tube, put it on your birthday list and say to folks, this is what I want for my birthday. And so when, as you use a tube, the cheap tubes up, replace it with the artist quality and you, you I, I think you will notice a difference did that answer all the questions Jane I can't remember what, what, what we were saying the last one was about what light you use and I've oh also right just yeah. had a question about the difference between warm white and titanium white and when would you use right one? okay well I've got again these are the Michael Harding again it's the warm white and the titanium. They don't look an awful lot different when you look at them like that. And you can probably hardly see the difference. That's titanium and that's warm white. But it's just, if you want, um, I, usually if I've got titanium, I, I will normally tint it. But warm white just mixes and it's just that little bit softer and it's lovely for painting skies and clouds and things like that. Again, although it is a warm white, I still tint it a bit. But um, so yeah, titanium's fine. It's just it's it's a nice shortcut and it's a nice um, yeah. I like it. I like it. And the light that I'm using, I can't show you because I'm using it. But what I can do, if you go onto um, onto the internet and look for what do they call them, um, phone holder with light you'll see them. In fact, what I'll do, because we're sending out a link to you, um, what I'll do is if I'll take a photograph of it and you'll see what it is I'm using. Because what it is, the one I've got at the moment has got um, a little switch on it and I shall just demonstrate to show you. It 
goes warm and blue. I don't know if that's normal. There we go. I think that's what I was using. So you've got different settings on it and um, that's quite useful. What it's used for really, I think, is for people that do um, uh, YouTubers or, or vloggers, as they call them, people that do their own videos because they're sitting looking at the camera. I've got my camera facing the other way, but normally if you were videoing yourself, you'd have it turned round. And so you, you've got a, an overall light. You haven't got overhead lights or anything like that. So it's to make you look beautiful. It's uh, yeah. So I, I mean, I'm using it for this and this, this, this to me, this is perfect. I wouldn't have normally have it quite at this angle though, because it's, um, but we need, oh, I know what I picked that brush up for. I was going to, sorry, I'm all over the place. Let me start with a clean brush. I must get some reflections of those berries in before I forget. There we I'm not seeing them as round shapes in the reflection. I'm just seeing um, little marks. I think, although they are defined by light and dark, I should have to go a bit darker. There's room. There we go. I think I've got enough in. I don't know where my cup of tea's gone. I put in an order for a cup of tea at three o'clock. It's not appeared. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I've got the shadows in. I'm looking for the colours in the jug. Uh, we've got the little branch. Let's get that in now. I haven't touched my white at all yet. Well, that's a lie because I did demonstrate it too, but um, I haven't touched the light. This is just pure colours mixed together. Oh, I did. No, I didn't. I used, no, that isn't white. It's um, King's Blue. But, it's, but it is opaque, so you've got that um, lightness. It's, it's made it opaque, yeah. That's dark behind there, very dark behind there, and then it comes out into the light. Let's get these stems in. I'm going to now use a bit more of that green. I'm going to mix it with well, I've mixed it with lemon yellow, but it's a bit, a bit, oh, a bit of a strong colour. No, I just need to, I just want to get that to show me where that stem is. That's probably a bit, a bit acid. I'm just warming it up. I use lemon yellow for that. I've just added a little bit of the Indian, which is much warmer. Got to look at these rotten leaves as well, haven't I? Why did I choose variegated? Because they look nice. Again, I'm, I'm using the same green I've used on there, which is the, um, it's the golden green. That's I mixed with the lemon, but then I added some of the Indian to it, which made it warmer. So I'm going to use, I think it just needs a bit more of the lemon for these um, leaves here. It's a bit light on there. Picking out the highlighted bits. I 
I'm in the bit I can't see now. When you've got something right on the edge of a painting, you don't want it to be too um, jumpy outy, so you can you can blend stuff and just lose it just a little bit. The other one, because this is the focus, you don't want something sharp and bright here. You really want to be focusing in on this um, central area, really. I'm jumping around a bit. I've just decided I'm going to put some of the shadowy bits of the colour. Shadows in white. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I've used King the King's Blue here with a touch of the lemon in it. So this is a greeny um, shadow. It's, it's not pink. And it's quite soft. It's quite subtle as well actually. Mine's gone too dark, but it's still registering because I've got this so nice and dark here. It's still registering nice and light against the uh, background. Possibly a little bit more blue. Yeah, I've put more blue in that. Oh, I didn't mark out where those centre bits are that I might lose. Squinting at it. Although it's yellow, it's, it's actually quite dark. So I'm going to put the darkest bits in and then I can put highlights on it. Uh, that's actually quite acid. I'm going to use a bit of the Indian yellow. That's probably a little bit better. And it's a good job you can't see me. I'm really screwing my eyes up looking at this, trying to work out the, the tones to make sure I don't get it too, um, too light it's darker than you think. Let's get some darks in here. Yeah, it's quite dark there. And so I'm going, I've gone back to the golden green. I've just added a little bit of the, <coughs> excuse me, the ultramarine into that just to get that really dark bit underneath because if it's really dark there you need to have that to give you the contrast for the lighter bits so I probably didn't go quite dark enough in here let's just get that a bit darker in there so this one hasn't got any dark bits in it so that's okay okay I'll just so now I've got that, I need to, oops, I didn't really go big enough. Again, I'm not, I'm not looking. I've got to make sure you've got to look at that bit in relation to the bit of leaf that's left over it. it comes down quite a bit further. There we go, it's made it bigger. And the shadow behind it, it's darker. So that has got to be much darker than, well, oh, screws eyes up again, yep, much darker than that. Yeah, I've just added, I actually added a tiny bit of alizarin into that and this is dark back there. So just looking again, you just got to pick out, looking at light against dark and dark against light all the time. Again, it, do, it doesn't matter if I, I was blamed in a little bit. Now this beautiful little bud at the back has behaved itself and it hasn't opened up, thank you. So we've got the shadow on that and a bit of shadow at the top of it. And I don't want it too sharp, so I can probably, you can use the end of your brush and just soften it like that. So I've gone from a very hard line there to a much softer line. And that's just softened that. We'll go to the inside of this petal here. Again, it's just goes a little bit, those variations are on the tones within the petal. I'm going to push that out and make that a bit bigger. That petal is much wider than I've got it. Um, and they overlap a lot. Where it overlaps, you've got to 
make sure you've got one against the other. That edge there is. Sometimes you realise you've been holding your breath, don't you? Right, let's get the back of this one that's over here. I've kind of lost my drawing on this side. Hopefully I can pull it out. That's a funny shape leaf. This, this particular flower had been there for a bit longer than the others and it um, was just beginning to go over. So it's, it's a bit tatty, but anyway, it's there performing for us. It looks lovely. I have to say, I think they're, this time of year, they're about my favourite flower in the garden. Right, okay. Well, while I've got that nice colour, do I need it anywhere else? Just because if you've got some nice colour here, you want to just, you've got continuity if you use it through the rest of the picture. Um, oh, I've forgotten about this handle, haven't I? I've got to start getting that in which I did lose it. I don't usually like to see them full on. I like them more of an angle, but I think because of the rest of the composition, I think that's worked okay. We can, we can manage that. Just getting a little bit more of this colour while I've got it here. Just looking to see where else I might see it. It's a bit lighter down there. We'll use some of it there. Okay. Right, so now I'm going to start going lighter. It would be a good time to clean my palette up a bit, but I think I've still got enough space. <coughs> Let's just have a square up, a little bit of a square up. So I'm just going to scrape that back. Right, so I've got an area there that I'll just wipe with my tissue to make sure that I've got that all clear. And then I can start looking at doing the, the, the cloth. One thing you can do, well, what this, um, my box is that I've got here, it's one of those storage boxes that you get from um, sort of DIY shops. I think this one was from Ikea. And, um, it's rather nice that you can, because I've in, in my studio, I've got I've got a, a direct big window there. I've got two Velux above me and I've got another window over there. So to get a constant light, I find that to put it in a box, it, it's very obvious if I'm if I'm painting in a place where there's natural sunlight, which I don't get in here, um, that, that's nicer and I would use natural sunlight, but unfortunately I don't get natural sunlight so a box like that's good or you could get a big cardboard box and cut a hole in the side and shine your light in and you've got nice side uh, light as well right now i was looking for a bigger brush let's go for what have we got here i don't know the numbers warmer that's number six so i'm going to start with i think because it's got these um uh, stripes it's not tea towel actually I'm going to use a mixture of alizarin and um, cadmium red and I'm going to put these these lines in so it is quite nice actually because what this does it gives us a little bit of perspective and what it would also do do I do two lines I'm making life hard for myself to be honest with you so if you if the cloth had got a a bump in it you, you can indicate the bump with the contour lines of the of the cloth so what you will have to think about is where the lines are in the light make sure they follow through where the lines are in the light there will be a lighter color than they would be in the shadows so this is why i haven't put them in, in the shadows yet I don't know if I'm getting my perspective right on this. I'm cheating now, I'm not actually looking at the thingy. So that goes there, 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 there. okay. I think this is sort of a bit of experience, you know where it should be. 
I have got the box on, um, but in my picture, the edge of the cloth is here. Now I could, I suppose, make them drop down, but it's because it's on the edge, I just think it might be a distraction. So I'm just gonna keep it like that. And oh, and of course we've got some ones going across as well. So we get those in. Now, of course, you know the problem I've got now is I've got a paint in between all these flipping lines, haven't I? I should probably lose some along the way. Again, think of the perspective. They would be closer together because they're going across. And again, I'm not um, painting. Can you see I'm not painting in the shadow yet because that is a different colour. But, but what this is actually doing, I'm going a bit, I'm brushing it, aren't I? Um, what this is actually doing is, is making um, a bit more interest in the foreground. So what I've got now, I've just got ultramarine, no, not ultramarine, alizarin, which is much darker because that is in the shadow and the bit that isn't in the shadow will be lighter. But of course it's picking up this light paint that I've put down in for the shadow. But anyway, let's just, just show you that the shadows will be darker in, in the actual shadows. So now of course I've got, got the difficult job of mixing and painting the in-between bits. I don't start off with pure white or a light colour. Um, this is quite a yellowy cloth. So I'm just, again, I'm, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, rather than dip into my, look at that, you see, rather than dip into that, I've dipped into that and that's still probably a little bit too strong. So I shall add a little bit more to that. I have got brilliant pink on here. I have to look and see if I've got any on it. There's just a pinprick on there. Might just be enough. So little is needed. Right, now I've got my brush loaded. I shall start to put... No, you see, look, that's a nightmare, isn't it? Probably should have put them on afterwards. You see, now you, you learn from my mistakes, don't you? There we go. I knew I shouldn't have done a double line. It doesn't matter though if you lose it because it's sometimes it's quite nice to have lost and found, <laughs> she says. Are you all still there? <laughs> We are. It's looking oh. lovely. It's truly looking lovely. Well, thank you. Um, Claire <laughs> has asked about brushes, and I've said that you like rosemary brushes, but do I do. you have any others as well? I, I Actually, I do. I'm a member of the um, SAA, and this, this one I've been using here, I've used a lot, and they are cheaper I suppose than the rosemary ones and it's um, acrylic and oil and this is a round one this is a number two actually and they they are very good actually they it says acrylic and oil but um, they're, 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 they're excellent so that means they're likely to be synthetic yes 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 I believe they are yes I say I can't remember how much they are now I mean I when I buy them I, I buy a big load and I can't throw them away though. You should see, I'm looking at my shelf over there, which I don't think you can see. Let me just turn you around. Can you see that shelf? All my brushes. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm not very good at um, throwing them away. I think, well, I'll, they'll come in handy. I'll use it again. Needless to say, I don't. Once you get the paint on, try not to push it around too much because that's when you start, it starts to get muddy. And occasionally you will pick up some of the 
shadow colours and things, but it doesn't matter. This is a, a field easel that I'm using. I, I used to use it when I went out painting all the time, but when because it's handy, you can you can put your uh, paints into the tray and carry them with you. But it's oh, I found it got so heavy that in the end, I bought myself a different setup. I bought a, an open box M. But I'm talking to you, and I've mixed up. First of all, I got too much yellow. Now I've got too much pink. I just touched it, so I'll start again. Still too much pink on my brush look. So I'll use that yellow rather than make the same mistake again. There we go. Use the biggest brush that you think you can get away with and then go one bigger. If you want to work on a, a large scale, basically all you need to do is get bigger brushes because you're making the same brush strokes, but on a bigger scale. And it takes probably as long to do a big painting with a big brush as it does to do a small painting with a small brush. Probably longer to do a small painting because it's more fiddly. Or at least with this, you can bash it in. I'm trying to be careful there because I, I've got some stems from the cherries, but I should have to try and paint those in carefully over the top. I haven't actually um, uh, said this yet, but anybody that's watching, if they think of something afterwards, I, I'm actually more than happy if you want to email me. Um, when we send out the, the link for this, um, I'll make sure my email address is there. And I really don't mind if you want to send me any questions or ask me anything. And also, I'm rather hoping that some of you might like to have a go at this and if you do I'd love to see and if you put it on Facebook or Instagram if you could tag myself and the IEA that would be excellent and then we can all see what you've been up to so I'd love to see what other people do and how they get on so we will be sending a, a copy of the photograph a photograph of, of the setup so that you will be able to work from it. It's not quite the same as, you know, as working from actual life, but having seen it done, I think it will be, it'll probably be helpful. Well, I hope it's helpful. And so you'll be able to have your go yourself and think, oh yeah, Mo did that wrong, I'll do this. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, sorry? I was just going to interrupt here because Eleanor's asked an interesting question. Hello, Eleanor. Which <laughs> is that if you painted the cloth before the line, so as in putting the white on first, would it be easier to add the lines on top? It would if it was dry, but it would, um, you would pick up. So this is like pure alizarin there, but if I wanted to paint, Let's just lighten this. Um, so where I painted over it completely, if I wanted to do a long line, I, I would probably end up with a very hard line. And I personally prefer to see this broken line. I don't know if you can see the difference because that is quite hard. This I didn't paint up to particularly. And that's quite a hard line there. So I would like to just soften it. But yes, um, you, you could do that. But I would, I kind of prefer to see the lost and found effect. Oh, I'm doing it into the wrong colour there. And also, if you're doing it like that, you will pick up the white. So you have picked up the colour that's underneath. 
but yes, it, it, it is making it hard for yourself doing a, something like this, but nobody said it was going to be easy. You see, that, that to me isn't as pleasing to the eye as this broken effect here. It, it, it can look a bit too, a little bit too checkered, if you like. So I'm just going to lose some of that. You can still see that it's a, I hope you can still see that it's a checker cloth, but I want to lose it a little bit. Yeah, does that make sense? Hopefully. It sure does, it sure does. And we can see the difference. Yeah, there is a difference, isn't there? Because you get, you get the hardness of it and then you get this with the softness of it, but that your brain says, yeah, oh yeah, well that's what's there. You don't have to see it. Now I'm going to do slightly, while I've got this cloth colour here, I'm looking now inside. I'm just using my brushes here to steady my hand. Um, I'm looking inside this vase that it's actually not quite as light as the background because the glass is reflecting and darkening some of the lights, but there is much lighter colour in there, which is representative of the background. So let's just see. So it's not the same colour as the background, although we can see the background through it because of the glass, we can see it is slightly darker. So it's just looking to see where it is. And again, as I say, it's paint for what you see. That's not quite the colour that was there, no. It was bluer than that. Painting, not looking. There we go. That's better. Following well on that at the back and inside. And we've got some lighter colour on the top as well. It's light and dark on here. Ooh, I've got that leaf. We could say I decided to leaf it out. Sorry. <laughs> that just covers some of that. That's good because I lose that ellipse then. So if it's wrong, you can't tell. the little touches of different tones in there so that it doesn't look solid colours. Come over here a bit now. Just want to break up, break some of this up a little bit. Uh, just put highlight on that bit of leaf there just to bring that back out again. Uh, I'm avoiding this side because I can't actually see it. Doesn't help, does it? Let's stand back and have a look. Okay. It's actually beginning to lose its shine. It's still very shiny from my point of view. No, this isn't very accurate, I'm afraid, because I seriously cannot see what I'm doing here. But that is my excuse and I'm sticking to it. You can still see what it is though, can't you? Hopefully. 
Now that doesn't look very symmetrical. That needs to come out there. Let's wipe my brush. I don't use my, I've got turps in this pot that's hanging here, but I don't wash my brushes very often. I prefer to wipe them. <clears throat> in fact, I don't usually have the turps out. I, um, I do find that although it's low odor, working in a confined studio, it does make my chest feel quite tight. So I tend not to have it open. I just clean my brushes at the end. Looks a little bit lopsided still, I think. The way to find out with jugs and things like that is to drop a set of your brush through and you can see then if, if it's symmetrical. Oh, forgetting about my lovely cherries. Poor Frank, I go shopping and I buy all this fruit to do my paintings with. He says to me, can I have an apple? <laughs> can I have an orange? Gonna, yeah, no, you can't have that. I'm going to paint it. Poor Frank. A little highlight back there. Yeah, that's lovely. I like that. Very nice. Okay. Quite a sharp line there. I'm just gonna. There we go. I've just softened that a bit. Right, I'm gonna come back to. I'm gonna have to squeeze more alizarin out. I do get through quite a lot of this. This is a series three as well, but it's quite thin. It doesn't seem to go quite as far. Or maybe it's because I use it on its own. I need a clean brush for this. So I've got the alizarin. What am I mixing it with? Are those cherries? Heck. Now, if I mixed it with the King's Blue, it would be too opaque. In fact, I've just made a mistake. I've mixed it with some of the pink and that's gone too opaque, milky. So let's just try the Cadmium Red. So I've gone, because it's really dark at the moment, but we are, it is much lighter. Um, than that. So I need it to just lighten those. So that, yeah, that's okay. That's cadmium red with the um, alizarin. Looking at the heart, trying to get the shape of the thing. It, it will still need to go a bit lighter. It's... Crumbs, that's really brought it out. What was the base colour for your cherries? Cherries, it was um, ultramarine and alizarin because I wanted to darken the alizarin. The alizarin on its own wouldn't be dark enough. Um, so I've now mixed it with the cadmium red, which let's see, that's too red. I need more alizarin with it. They're 3D already. Are they really? <laughs> Good. I love painting plums. It, I've always the challenge to get that bloom on them. That, um, and I'll tell you what, that king's blue colour is lovely. If you drag that across a plum and it just leaves that lovely uh, bloom that you get. Don't overdo it. I'm just wondering actually if my orange, what that would do, it might make it go a bit brown. Let's have a look. I haven't painted cherries a lot, uh, so I'm not that familiar with what I should be doing. There's just a little bit of cadmium orange now in this for the lighter areas, because obviously I don't want to put white in. Because if I put white into that, it's going to go chalky. So how do you lighten something without it you know, how do you lighten white without it going pink? It's um, red without it going pink. So it, it's quite a experiment really, I suppose. See, so they're getting a bit, no, nah, it's not quite the right colour, is it? Now that is probably better. What do you think? Yeah, that's the pink. 
Yeah, that's better. I think the orange has made it too um, apple looking colour wise. Yeah. I know it's a little dark bit in the middle. I don't want to put too much paint on there because that's where I want to put a highlight. See, you have to plan ahead, don't you? Think these things through. Now I can hopefully look at my um, my berries. I'm using my little finger, make sure it's clean, to rest here. And it's fairly, I'm using that little brush again. I'm not going to put some on there because that one's in shadow. So think about the ones that might be in shadow. You want them lost and found. You don't want them all to jump out like little beacons. So I'm leaving some of them sort of fairly hidden. Now, coming up here. And that's in the light. There's the ones inside are not light. So this is just pure cadmium red. It's lovely, isn't it? Oh, gorgeous. This is the top of that one. So once I've got the, the berries done, I'll be able to, if it's, for example, if I'd made one too big, I should be able to just cut into it to make it the right size. Now I'm going to use my orange. as well. I'm just going into those for the highlights. Again, it's going to be quite tricky with trying to put a white highlight on those. This is one occasion it might be better to wait until it's dry. But you can see it would be a mistake to paint them all the same colour. I think keeping them um, like that at the moment is, is probably the best thing to do. I have better look at these um, rest of the honey balls now. That's a clean brush. Let's go for a clean brush. So they are white, but they're not pure white. So I'm going to use the um, warm white. I've just mixed a little bit of the zest medium into it so it flows a bit better. Um, just wondering which, I want to use a yellow to make it a warmer yellow. I've used the cadmium yellow. Again, it's, it's, um, it's an artist quality one and I only just touched it and got too much. So I'm starting again with another mix and then using what my mistake was. Right. Let's, so this is lighter, but not as light as that. So let's just try. This is where you can start putting thicker paint on. I think white deserves to go on much thicker. And put it on and leave it. Don't start messing it about. Don't always know if it's in the right place, but. Be careful, I don't say pick up. That's lighter, but not as light as that. That's not as light as that. So this is where my highlight is really over here. Right, try and get that in. Again, minimal brush strokes if you can. It's it's um it can get fiddly if you start trying to mess it up too much. I've picked up some of that green, so make sure that you don't have that for your next stroke. Pick some more up, but hopefully that can be all right. That just need to mix again because I've got that mixture mucky now. We've got the um. What are they? The stamens, isn't it? They 
they are um, protruding here. I've got to think about how I'm doing that. I've just mixed up a, a slightly shadowed white because although this is white, it's not as white as the bit over here that's in full shadow. So I've used a little bit of a pinky colour because I've just realised that is that is as white as that and that needs to be whiter there. But I can do this one as well, can't I? Just blending that in because that was a bit too strong. And though that goes white there, it's still in shadow, but not as shadows as that bit. I can just blend those two colours together, but I'm leaving that darker shadow right next to the other bit. I'm holding my breath again. <laughs> uh, Mo, is the yes. white? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Is yes, the sorry. white on your petals a brighter white than the white on the tea towel? It it will hopefully be eventually. I haven't put as much yellow into it, but, but it will be because um, looking at the tea towel, it is a warmer, especially because the shadows go, the light's going across it. And I don't want that to shout, oh, this, this is my picture. This is where I want my light, this color to be. So um, no, that is, the, hopefully that's going to be whiter than this. That's got more pink in it. And I haven't got pink in the, um, this, Well, yeah, it is looking fine. lovely from here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you can probably see it better than me. That's looking a bit weird. That wants to be whiter there. Anyway, I'll come back to that. Let me have a look at this. I need to come back now to this um, little uh, silver thingy. This is where you, you kind of need slightly harder lines to represent the silver. Mm. Now that's a bit white. You see, that is quite a cold white there. That's not nice. Oh, I'll have to, oh dear dear. No, that's too pink. Oh well. Win some, you lose some. Right, let's try down here. We've got the reflections. This brush is probably too big for this bit that I'm doing, but I shall persevere. Just getting rid of that for a minute. It's uh, excuse me. Okay. Standing over, it's not good for me. I'm sure. This is where you might, if you're not careful, lose the <coughs> the ellipse. There's a few more marks to go in on that. It, it, it's, it's kind of now just looking around the whole picture and seeing what I've done and what I haven't done. And I need to cut in around these. Um, yeah, we'll get there, we'll get there. I know we started late, so if you don't mind, I'll, I will run on a little bit longer. Yeah, apologies for the uh, hiccups at the beginning, folks. Those that had to wait.
This is such a learning curve for us all. That's supposed to be light, uh, darker than that. This is um, some highlights on the green, but it's uh, not big. I just wanted to break up that a little bit more. And that leaf coming down. Let's carry that through a bit. Oh no, that's that one. It is important to follow things through, but make sure you're following it through onto the right leaf. Just little touches. Little touches. Do I sound like Bob Ross? <laughs> yeah, that's broken that up a little bit. I need to get this in, don't I? This help. Okay, I'm just squinting at it and I'm just thinking to myself, come on Mo, paint what you see. So that's what I tell people. It is much darker behind those stamens back there and I don't know how I'm going to do that. I'm going to have to just bring the oh, clean brush. Um, just bring that down into there and then cut into it. In fact, while I've got that here, I'm gonna paint around these. Now, if I'd got that stem too fat, I could thin it down. In other words, make a pinched line. But I think it's not too bad. Just need to get some, that's the background. Color. Oh, color. Start with a fresh brush. So that was my um, um, burnt umber ultra and alizarin. Right. So I need to have that nice and dark right next to my um, my darkest dark next to my lightest light, and that's going to help it all to jump out. Again, I, I don't, don't want too much detail over there, not that I can see what I'm doing. Uh, look at me, all over the place. Now, what I have got somewhere, I can find it, <coughs> is... Nope, not that one. Yeah, this one, it, this is a rigger. It, it's still got quite a spring on it, but we can get fine detail. So I'm going to use lemon yellow diluted with uh, my zest it to make it flow a bit better. Maybe just a touch of white in it because it's a bit, a bit strong. So I've got a white and lemon yellow it, and it's size zero. It holds breath. <laughs> Come on, we can do this. So you, I was picking up the dark underneath. I've had to regroup, shall we say. It would be easier to do it on a, a dry board. And there's some, on this side, there's some highlighted bits. Again, if it looks good, you think, oh, that looks good, I'll do some more of that. But you must remember that, as I said before, less is more. Let's pick up where those are. There's some in the middle. Those are a bit white, actually. I need a bit more yellow on them. Yeah. 
Uh, well, I've got the rig around, so I might as well put the stalks on the cherries. So I've got, um, what have I got here? Burnt umber. Look at them, uh, they're not burnt umber, they've got green on them. So it's a mixture of burnt umber and the golden green. Sometimes it's the little touches like this that just finish off a picture and you can, um, you can slightly improvise. So if you wanted, this one shoots off over here, but you could have it if you wanted to, to curl it wherever you want. But I, I think I will actually just put it across there. Sometimes if you make things up there, it doesn't work and you think oh, I shouldn't have done that. But they're not one flat colour, they have got colour on them. I'm just putting a bit of where that's caught the light on there. So rather than just mix up one, one flat colour, so that's the colour of the stems. If you look carefully, they, they fall in and out of shadows. So where this, for example, goes across this, shadow it might register it doesn't but just to show you it might register lighter but it, it just makes them look a bit more interesting to be honest so that's it's not a one flat color that's that's basically i'm gonna put this over here so i don't reach across right how are we doing let's have a look now i think we need to start thinking about a few more highlights and marks on here. Um, again, I haven't yet gone to pure white. I'm still using the warm white with, um, I think the Indian yellow is my preference because it's a lovely warm, warm colour. I'll get the rest of my hand a little bit here. I've actually got quite a dark colour in the middle and it, it goes, it does go lighter. But just... Highlights on that. And there. Don't forget, as soon as you put pure white on, that is as white as you're ever going to be able to go. So if you want a highlight after that, you've, you've, you've lost your chance. Well, I can't put a highlight there because I've done that stem there. Now, I've got two, two important questions here. Yes. The first one from Jane Whittenshaw is, did you get your cup of tea? I did not. Someone's in trouble, especially if I go through there and he says, what are we having for tea? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the second one is from Claire, Claire Metzen, and she says, do you find you often add marks when the painting is dry? Very rarely. Very rarely. Um, no, I, I don't think I do. I think once once I've finished the picture, I say, I'm, I've done that one, I'm going to move on to the next one. And you know why I move on to the next one? Because it's going to be better. <laughs> <laughs> So the next one is always going to, it's always, the next one's always going to be the one, isn't it? You think, oh, I, no, yeah, that's going to be the one. That's going to be my best picture ever. And when that goes wrong, you think, well, okay, next one will be okay. <laughs> it's what keeps us going. It's true. It's true. I do tend to wake up most mornings quite optimistic. Yes. Uh, but I mean, do you, for instance, the other day when I spoke to you, you were painting. How long do you tend to take for a, a, a still life? Obviously, it varies, but. Um, if I was doing this on my own, I would probably have finished it by now. I would have worked a lot quicker. Um, so, yeah, two hours, I think. And the same if, if I'm working plein air, two hours. I lose concentration, I think. I just want to get on with it and move on to the next day. Um, but 
yeah, very rarely, more than two hours. And so very rarely do I go back to something. I was working on something the other day and I got distracted. I never did go back to it, but I can always work over it and do another picture on it. So I don't worry too much. I think we need some more marks on the silver jug. That's the kitchen I've got. Right, uh, looking at the silver jug, I've still got my rigger and I was going to put pure white on them, but no, I'm mixing it with my yellow. Back to the yellow. There are some very fine lines at the bottom of this. My hand isn't steady enough. Hopefully that will suggest them. Um, reflected light. Oh, I don't know where to press my hand. I need one of those big sticks, don't I? On a mile stick. I'm just literally now looking to see where those little highlights are. And I think now, yes, I have just dipped into the, just the warm white in the areas that I want that to be. One, well, just coming down here, just slightly darker, just to get the shape of that at the bottom. Well, it's a bit, it's a little bit lost and found, I think, down here. Don't want it too sharp. There's some nice little highlights there that I haven't got. I think we need to just get a few highlights off this. So I've got some of the orange on there. Hmm. Picked up the white. A bit of orange on there just to reflect those berries. A little bit of colour down there. It's nice just to bring, and I know there isn't any in this, but I'm can you see I've just put a little bit of orange in there and that just helps to carry in, carry it through and give a sort of a, a unity shall we say. How are we doing? Let's have a look at it. Um, I don't know if I want to put a lot more white white onto here, I'm not sure really. Well how do you sign your paintings? Um, if it's this size I have, I can use the rigger, and usually when it's dry, I just put my initials and I'll sign it on the back. If it was a big painting, I just put MD to you, but, but small. I made, um, when I, I used to first started selling paintings, I had some work in the Ringstead Gallery in Norfolk, and we're going back, gosh, um, it must be 30 years or so. And Don Greer, who, who ran the gallery, and um, lovely chap, I had a painting in there, and he said to me, he said I could have sold that today, so I said, oh, what, what was the problem? And he said, the signature was too big. I thought, right. And I have seen, since that, and I do keep it as small as I can, but I have seen people whose signature actually dominates the picture, and I thought, so that was, that learned, I learned a lot. I thought, oh, I thought about that. But yeah, I know this chap would have would have had it, he said, but he didn't, he thought the signature was just too big. I mean, it wasn't massive, but it, to him, it, it, it distracted from what he wanted from the painting. So yeah, that's something, it's something to bear in mind anyway. But do you, do you mix a colour um, that goes with the painting? Yes, I do. Yeah, some people will always sign with the same colour. Um, I tend to not. I tend to just use what I've got on the palette. Sometimes I forget to sign it and I have to go back to it the next day, but that's probably better actually. I, now what I've done there, I've just put some thicker paint on and I don't know, this may not work. Bear with. Oh, this, this brush here, it's called a coma and you can't see it, but I don't know, can, can you see? It's got very um, uneven top it's like rake or something like that and what I want to do if I can is just to smudge that highlight rather than have a 
can you see the difference that's made? It's hopefully made it look a little bit like a, a shiny thing. <laughs> that's my tip me being technical. It's a shiny thing. It's it's very technical. But you know, <laughs> all, all these little things that you're doing, are you able to do them when you're doing plein air? Do you paint differently plein air? Uh Yeah, well, I wouldn't be doing sparkly things, no. <laughs> um, I don't want to paint different plants. No, I don't think I did, really. No, no, I just I just have the same approach, I think. I just see, paint what I see. Um, I always, I never thought I had a style. And I was always, because I've got, I've got some lovely painting friends. I won't mention them all here, but I've got some lovely painting friends. And you, you as soon as you see the picture, you think, oh, that's by, and you know, don't you? Um, and I never thought I'd got my own style, but somebody said to me that they thought I had. But it always worried me that my pictures looked like other people's pictures. And I didn't want that. I wanted somebody to say, oh, that picture's by Mo. Um, so I think sometimes when people go outside and to, do, to do a painting, maybe they've got a mindset of how they want it to look. Well, I tried to do that. But he just came out look, like looking like one of mine. I thought, oh, you know, I saw that oh, in the end. I thought, well, I'll just paint and enjoy it, which is what I do. Yeah, I think, I don't know if that's quite right there. Let's get that lighter on that edge. Now, I'm beginning to fiddle. I don't want to do that. So I, I think, unless you can see something ridiculously obvious, I think we could probably stop there. What do you think, folks? You could go on too long. You've got to know when to stop. I mean, I think what I would do when I can see this, I I would probably put some highlights on that first, just to see if I can, if I don't want to step in front of the camera. And I don't want to be too light too soon over here because, yeah, it, it would um, distract. But there are some there are some beautiful highlights over this side but I don't want to put too much in this is just lemon yellow and white just little touches at the end little tiny bits sometimes yeah we might finish too soon you think you finished you go back to it and you think oh I didn't do that didn't do that but sometimes it is what it is that's what I think. I need to think about it. Just a bit of some green in there. Um, and if, if you think the cherries are looking too much like cardboard cutouts, you just use the end of your brush and soften them. Can you see how that's softer than that? It, it's all I've done is really just to get that bottom line and just to soften it especially on this edge we don't want that jumping out at me over here yeah that's that's just they don't look like look pieces of paper i've cut out and stuck on now hopefully they'll blend in with the with the background and it's just the end of the brush i'm using you could go in with some darks underneath and all this but i yeah i think i think we'll stop there I think we'll stop there. Okay. Well, that, thank you everybody that joined us and for everybody that stayed to the end. Thank you. <laughs>